Now, some of you may remember a video I made, and I'll put a link to it here, of uh, me creating this four-wheel drive rock crawling uh, model. And I used a technique of top-down design, and in order to help that, I even had created my own custom feature called Published Geometry. Um, briefly, this is where I can select certain entities, such as curves, edges, faces, bodies, sketches, or mate connectors, and sort of wrap them up into, a, in, into one published piece of geometry, which then I could use downstream um, to do my, my other parts of modeling. This is a common top-down design technique, and it works really well in Onshape with this um, with this custom feature that I created. Well, I'm pleased to say that I have now published the published geometry custom feature. You can get this, um, you can find this as an official published thing. And I'll again put the link to this. And in the, uh, I've got one little example shown in the published geometry description here, which is the PDF that is always part of a uh, custom feature uh, that anyone publishes. And I do explain the top-down design use case, which is its primary use case, uh, I think. Uh, but there's a really, really good other one, which I want to show just briefly here as well. And it involves what happens when you need to work with very, very large imported data sets. Now, this one here, um, I just got this from GrabCAD. It's a little bit of a monster. Um, you see that there's, there's many, many details in this. Uh, in fact, there's, uh, let's see, f uh, nearly 6,000 entities. A lot of those, well, a bunch of them will be fasteners. Um, but there's a lot of entities in here. So it's uh, a big assembly, uh, or at least a medium-sized assembly in anyone's um, book. So what happens when you want to deal with this and sort of build around it and build other things? Um, and one key thing I've seen people get in trouble with is bringing this all, and the worst possible thing people can do is bring this all into essentially a single part studio and then just work with that. Uh, very, very bad idea. Um, and let's talk about some better ways to do it. The better way to do it is to always import as an assembly. And because of, if you import it as assembly, you'll get the full benefit of instancing and you won't have to do anything, you know, um, nasty and silly inside the part studio where you have to sort of copy and, and instance and transform things uh, just so that you get um, what is, is a full representation of geometry. So first thing you should do is always import as an assembly. I've actually got these as separate imports, uh, sorry, as separate documents. Uh, there's an option in there to do that. Uh, so where the sub-assemblies come in as separate documents. But, you know, that's, a, that's probably, uh, you know, a completely separate video. But what I want to show now is that from this point, when we've got this as an assembly, um, all the good stuff starts. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a display state. And a display state just hides things um, and shows you only the, the, the ones, the things that might be relevant for, for the next part of the journey. For me, I'm looking at the rear fuselage, um, so I'm going to, um, you know, create a display state here, um, where I've, uh, and you can, you, of course, you can update display states if things are in there that you don't need. Um, I made sure that I kept this mate connector here, which is going to be the aircraft coordinate system reference. Uh, it's different from the world origin, um, typically. Uh, there's one standard here where the the origin of the aircraft coordinate system is in front of the nose of the aircraft at the ground so that all the water lines or all the Z dimensions uh, will be positive. And the, the X direction is down the length of the aircraft and uh, using the right hand rule, you know, Z is up and um, Y is to the starboard wingtip. All right, so I've made sure that I should, showed that in the display state. Once I've got my display state, and this is the, the reason for wanting to do a display state is at this point, I'm gonna create an in-context part studio. So we have created the, the context, and now we're going to create the part studio. It's a very, very easy thing to do. And you'll see that even on a large model like this, it doesn't take a whole lot, right? See, that's real time there. Now we've got our context, but we're in a part studio. So, you know, at this point, you can do normal modeling uh, techniques. You know, you could offset some faces, you could sketch on things. Um, but at this point, I'm going to use the published geometry uh, custom feature. Now I've got it on a shortcut toolbar because I use it all the time. Um, so here it is. 
uh, but you can install it and put it in, uh, in, in the regular, um, regular methods. So with published geometry, uh, what we're going to do here is I call this rear fuselage. And we're going to select some surfaces, perhaps, or some faces there uh, that I'm going to use. And maybe this one uh, on the side here. Um, so basically, you can use a real minimum number of, um, of faces and surfaces that, uh, that are going to be relevant for the modeling exercise that you want to do. Um, let me come a bit closer here. That one there as well. Uh, did we pick anything else? It doesn't have to be symmetric. Maybe I want this big one as well. Okay, so I've got those surfaces. And I'm also going to pick this mate connector, this aircraft mate connector uh, coordinate system, because I want to use that uh, in downstream, make sure that we're always pointing and referring to the same thing. So you can see here, I've created a published geometry feature. I've given it a name. And what you're going to see happens here is I insert this back in the assembly. And you'll see here that the published rear fuselage uh, is appeared as a composite part in my assembly. Now this is uh, on purpose, um, and we can you know look into it, and you can just see that it's brought along a mate connector. Now at this point, we could start another part studio, and as the first thing we're going to do in there is derive in that composite part that we just created in in part studio one, the one we just created. We created this published geometry called rear fuselage. We bring that in, and here it is, right? So now all we have in this part studio is this reference coordinate system, a selection of faces here. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, nine, 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 what are faces? There's one at the back here, and that is it, right? So you see here that it's a very, very lightweight part studio, so we could start doing things. Uh, maybe we want to, you know, turn this into an actual thick piece of geometry so we could thicken it. Uh, maybe we're going to create formulas. Uh, we're going to create some lofts uh, and, and other things in between. So at this point, the downstream top-down design um, workflow is, is off and running. And, and um, you know, and this is the real benefit of being able to just bring in exactly the things you want in one feature, which is this derived feature from the published geometry. Right. So that's the real benefit of it. Now, the, if we go back to where we created this published geometry um, here, and you can look at the composite part that we created called pub rear fuselage. Now, because this is a part, if you're working in a professional or enterprise environment, you can release this part. And releasing the part puts it under you know, real formal revision control so that you can make sure that downstream uses of it, uh, you can control the, um, the fact whether you know, certain revs are being used. That's a really, really powerful thing. And because it's in one part, you don't have to worry about, oh, this surface from here, this surface from there, uh, and everything else. It's all in one. That's a good benefit. And it means you can release those sketches as well. So for top-down design that only uses a sketch as its skeleton, uh, then you can use published geometry equally for that as well. The real power is going to come when we create a new um, document. Let's just create an unnamed document here. And this is a completely separate document from our original aeroplane document. What I'm going to do is bring in uh, and to, to do that first, I'm actually going to create a version. Now I'm going to create a version here in the original document so that when I, this time, when I derive in, I'm going to derive in from this other document, the Spitfire document, and I'm going to derive in the, the rear fuselage. All right, here it is here. And just as before, we have our reference geometries, we have our reference coordinate system, and we have our faces and, and whatever else we, we brought in. The big benefit from doing this is that this is the lightest possible weight uh, of, of modeling that you can do. If you have a look at 
the, uh, the feature regeneration times here, this derived feature is regenerating in 50, 50 milliseconds. Um, and there's no other weight behind it. There's no overloaded of all these other references or faces or hidden, hidden things. Nothing of that is being brought across um, because of the method we've used here to first create an in-context part studio, which isolates just the, con uh, just the things that we need. And then we've made a version and we've referred to that version reference here in this new document. Um, so you're unburdened or not, not burdened by anything uh, from this really, really heavyweight top level assembly. We can go ahead now and do all our modeling techniques uh, and, and modeling of the detailed formers and, and stringers and whatever else we want to, knowing that these references are exactly associated to the original top level assembly. Um, and so if anything changes, all we would have to do is make a new version here and update our version um, downstream. So that's a really quick one. Um, I Just to summarize, always use assembly methods for importing large assembly, uh, for importing large step files and things like that. Um, always use in context rather than going to the part studio. Uh, always use an in context part studio and therefore you can only choose the references you really need to do your modeling, whether it is normal modeling techniques or with this new publish geometry custom feature.